They laughed at human noses until their city started melting from human snot commander Alex Reed held his saliva back as he walked into the Grand Council Chamber on Galactic Hub Omega 900s of alien eyes darted between his face and his fellow human diplomats several snickered one laughed loudly and pointed a long purple finger at Alex's face. How do you smell anything with that deformity? The alien asked in broken English. His forehead eyes was squinted in alien laughter. His species were the organ they were the most powerful and hundreds of alien eyes flickered between Commander Alex Reed's face and his fellow human diplomats as he entered the vast council room on Galactic Hub Omega-9. They continued to giggle at human noses until their city began to melt from the constant snot. How can someone with Alex's disfigurement smell anything? One person laughed loudly while pointing a long purple finger at his face. Captain Thompson of the Terran Federation, speaking in a mangled form of English, questioned, What is this? It's a human nose. The alien species, the Zoran, was the most powerful in the Alliance. His narrowed eyes betrayed his alien amusement. As if to show his pride, Ambassador Kryn R dramatically covered his nasal slits. Members of the audience laughed and whispered under their breath. Alex contained his escalating fury. If he failed to rally the Alliance's backing against the Dominion, Earth would be left vulnerable, and the fate of humanity rested on his shoulders. I will not bury the truth. Alex shouted it loud and proud. This is the human race in all its vile, ugly glory. While Ambassador Kryn was making cruel jokes, the other aliens couldn't help but join in. Alex clenched his fists, knowing that the fate of humanity depended on his ability to control his fury. Standing up from his floating chair, Ambassador Kryn addressed the Council and the renowned members of the Galactic Alliance. Alex shot an icy stare at the conceited alien, who smirked slightly behind his slightly flared nose. Zio looked over to Alex as he spoke this, and a number of the other council members nodded and muttered things like about time, and quite right. Despite his anger, Alex maintained his composure and delivered the speech with an even tone, urging the less than ideal species that participate in our sacred trade routes and marketplaces to pay their fair share. Our inventive technologies and resourceful abilities have helped various worlds, and humanity has made many vital contributions to our alliance. Humans worked hard to gain a spot on this council, thanks to the hyperspace relays, acceleration, terraforming technologies, and quantum entanglement communications network that were all reverse engineered and perfected. Lesser accomplishments from a lesser species, Clock waved his long-fingered hand dismissively. Your kind's primordial biology is evident in your crude facial protuberance, smaller brains, odd number of appendages, and startling the Grand Chamber resounded with a deafening alarm. And the council members, bewildered, frantically glanced around. Some people are getting up from their seats in fear of an imminent emergency. All members are ordered to report to the secure briefing area as a mysterious vessel with an unknown configuration and origin approaches the council headquarters, according to a robotic voice announcement. Need to evaluate and respond to the danger at Theta-6 right away. It's not a drill hole. What these haughty pricks don't know is that Alex suppressed a scoff. Humanity may have been monitoring that enormous ship's movements through Alliance territory for the past few days, but these idiots have been too preoccupied with making fun of humans to notice the danger right in front of them. A gigantic black extraterrestrial appeared on the main hollow screen as it illuminated. No Alliance member can compare to Dreadnought, which is five times larger. The ship resembled a gigantic lobster claw with sharp spikes and luminous red lines. It was en route to the space station where the Alien Council was currently stationed. A number of the aliens stared at the screen in disbelief, while others frantically pressed the buttons on various consoles to glean more information. Despite the chaos, everyone maintained composure. Sox screamed, and Alex could feel the trembling in the Gorgon's nostrils as he said, We'll analyze this unknown ship and figure out what to do. We will need to put this discussion on hold, Captain Thompson, until this situation is settled. Of course, Alex curtly nodded while keeping a grin on his face. Distinguished individual, 
he motioned to his fellow humans, and they trailed behind him as he left the council chambers. We can resume our conversation once this crisis has passed, he said. My crew and I are here to assist you in any way we can. Now that the arrogant aliens couldn't see it, Alex decided to force a little smile on his face. When one of the troops, a burly man called Martinez, stepped up and asked, Sir, with all due respect, what the fuck are you talking about? Alex took a big breath and stated his reasoning, breaking the awkward quiet. Because of our natural scent, pheromones, and sweat, the KX is focusing on us like a beacon. However, if we flood the air with the signal, it can overwhelm their senses, confuse them, and disorient them. As a realization washed over his teammates, they grimaced and removed their worn-out uniform tops in rapid succession. Alex, too, felt a twinge of shame as the fabric ripped away from the plasma burn on his chest, but in no time at all, they were all bare-chested, shiny from perspiration, and the air was heavy with the slightly acidic aroma of human pheromones. It was as if it were coating Alex's flesh. The impact on the Carex was swift and substantial, causing the insectoid warriors to act erratically and uncoordinatedly. Some of them clutched their heads, hissing in apparent pain, while others stood motionless, their antennae twitching, as if they were drunk. Martine said that they were confused about which way was up, and Alex couldn't help but crack a ferocious smile. The aliens attempted a retaliation, but their attacks were clumsy and disorganized. They swiped at nothing, fired at shadows, and even attacked each other in their confusion. The charge surged forward as a wall of slick, pheromone-drenched skin, and blazing plasma rifles crashed into the confused cars like a tidal wave blasting and battering them back. A plasma tornado, Alex was a torrent of perspiration. Under the bright emergency lights, his exposed flesh shimmered as he sensed the invading invaders' vertigo and terror, which he could only imagine as a reflection of his own. With each stride, the humans drove the invaders back towards the sharp gap they had blown in the wall of the council chamber. The alien exoskeleton pieces crunched underfoot as Karik's Leor painted the floors a slippery blue. Alex and his team pressed on with their assault, and the coax line broke. The warriors squatted wildly for the exit, trying to escape the human musk miasma by clambering over each other. Alex roared at the top of his lungs. The humans pursued the aliens as they ran through the station, their bodies drenched in perspiration and their weapons hewing plumes of blazing plasma. The aliens were driven back to their ship by the sound of their cries and the effects of the pheromones. The cloying scent of human pheromones followed them like an oppressive cloud keeping the Carax off balance and demoralized by the time they reached the docking bay where the crack ship was anchored the aliens were in full rout. They practically dove through the gaping rent in their vessels hull heedless of the jagged metal edges that tore at their carapaces, Alex and his team skidded to halt chests heaving and weapons trained on the defeated invaders. They watched as the last of the cars disappeared into their ship the hatch slamming shut behind them. With a resounding clang for a moment, there was silence save for the hum of the docking bay's atmospheric containment field, and the human soldiers labored breathing the air was thick with sweat plasma scorching and the coppery tang of alien. Despite all the odds, they managed to repel the Karak's invasion using only their wits, weapons, and peculiar biological traits. As Alex glanced about at his team, his shirtless, sweaty, courageous band of human brothers and sisters, he shivered, his muscles trembling from fatigue and adrenaline let down. The exhausted Martinez gave him the thumbs up, even as they reveled in their triumph. Alex sensed that this was just the start. The Karks may have withdrawn for the time being, but they would undoubtedly return, and the Galactic Council would face heavy consequences for abandoning humanity in the face of this danger. With a solemn vow, Alex promised himself a final settlement. What mattered most was their victory over seemingly insurmountable circumstances, which they achieved by bravery, innovation, and unwavering human perseverance. The arrogant superior aliens, who had belittled humanity and its basic biology, would soon find out just how competent that biology was. Alex yelled out again, 
this time his words echoing over the battered docking bay. Okay, everyone, put on your helmets again. We need to go see our respected council members. And somebody, please, get me a towel. Wow, it's as if I just completed a half marathon in a sauna. As Alex guided his crew back towards the destroyed council chamber, he couldn't help but feel a surge of pride in their noses as laughing resounded across the human ranks, a result of relief and togetherness. Under the skin of a human, the galactic community was about to discover a valuable lesson. Never underestimate a human, particularly not a perspiring, shirtless one on a mission to rescue the day. Human pheromones, those rudimentary biological traits that aliens mocked and despised, had been humanity's savior. The walls were mirrored with scorch marks. A foul odor of plasma discharge and alien blood permeated the recycled air. The floors, which had once been spotless, were now covered in the shattered remains of Karix warriors, their carapaces shattered and icarosing. Despite the carnage, the atmosphere was one of shocked elation. The council members gazed at the victorious humans with a mixture of amazement and disbelief. These primitive beings, whom they had ridiculed and mocked only hours ago, had miraculously saved their lives. Ambassador Kryn was the first to break the silence. With his nostrils drooping in anticipation of the pheromone-laden air, the Zoran advanced toward Alex, his beady eyes wide with astonishment. Captain Thompson Exio started with an unusually modest tone in his speech. My prior words and deeds have hurt you, and I'm sorry. The courage and resourcefulness displayed by your folks today have made me realize my mistake. Alex nodded, but he was too tired to feel bad about what he had done. Everyone here is on the same side. Ambassador Kryn. A murmur of assent rippled through the chamber as Cox turned to address the rest of the council. In light of the humans' heroic actions in defense of the council and its values, I hereby propose a motion to grant their species full membership in the Galactic Council, along with all the rights and privileges that entails. Zoran's words carried weight, and the other officials nodded in agreement. The swift response from Ambassador Kryn was anonymous, and I would like to propose that the insectoid the humans have demonstrated their worth more than once, and Kryn's greed has rattled the enormous rock-like girls that stand as a symbol of their power and valor. As each council member answered the questions, the motion was unanimously approved, and the final total flashed on the empty screen that had just shown the cork's dreadnought. As the votes were counted, Alex felt a surge of pride. Humanity had finally achieved its proper position. In the company of the stars, not as an inferior race or subhuman people, but as complete and equal partners yet again, Sok reached out to Alex this time with a long-fingered hand. As the head of the human contingent, Captain Thompson, I respectfully request that you step forward and serve as our formal representative on this council. Ignoring the minor flinch, Alex firmly clasped the Zoran's hand. Zeo received another whiff of his pheromone-soaked skin. As the other Krins crowded around to express their congratulations, I accepted the position of ambassador and pledged to do my utmost to promote the interests of humanity and the Council. It was more than just pheromones that piqued their interest. Alex noticed, as they leaned in close to sniff his and his fellow human scent, a crucial component in their victory, with flared olfactory organs and narrowed nostrils. As the Council members gazed at the humans' noses, they couldn't help but marvel at the fleshy projections that had once been made fun of. Ambassador Kryn's compound eyes gleamed as she pondered the idea that such a sophisticated sense organ could be so obviously present. Alex, whose adrenaline from the battle was finally fading, grinned wearily. It's funny how that old earth saying holds. It's not the size that matters, but how you use it. The room was filled with laughter as the council members finally saw the humans for what they truly are valuable allies with unique strengths and perspectives. As the laughter subsided, Alex's smile turned serious, but the lesson was clear. We must never underestimate a species just because they look different. Karx nearly caught us all off guard as we were too preoccupied with passing judgment on one another. 
XO nodded solemnly, acknowledging that you are correct. Captain Thompson, you have given us a sobering lesson in the perils of bigotry and the benefits of solidarity. From now on, this council will work to appreciate, rather than belittle, the diversity among its members. The chamber was filled with murmurs of agreement. It was a turning point, a paradigm change in the very fabric of galactic society, and Alex Thompson stood at its center, perspiration streaming down his bare chest, the weight of history pressing down on his shoulders. He understood that this was only the beginning of humanity's galactic journey and that many difficulties and tests were ahead. Nevertheless, he allowed himself a moment of satisfaction for the moment. The galaxy, and with a grin on Alex's face, the Council's perception of the lowly human nose, would both change after humanity's first daring forays into the cosmos demonstrated its bravery, resourcefulness, and, yes, biological strength. The narrative has come to a close.